kind of just give this whole thing a wipe down because if it sticks and falls apart on me, I will cry on, on the show. Hi, I'm Lonnie. I'm a professional baker. And in this box are all the ingredients for a $97 cheesecake. Hi, I'm Daniel. I'm a home cook. And these are my $17 cheesecake ingredients. Ay, ay, ay. It's a spiced orange ricotta cheesecake with ginger cookie crust. Sounds banging, not gonna lie. <laughs> I had some excellent ingredients. For my filling, I had ricotta cheese, cream cheese, and organic sour cream. Ricotta cheese. Never in my life have I seen this. <laughs> Granulated sugar, organic pasture-raised eggs, lemon, butter, cornstarch. America's favorite thickener. <laughs> Yeah, okay, yep, I was right. It does thicken things, cool. And my favorite, vanilla extract. I was planning on swirling some homemade marmalade into the filling made from orange, lemon, sugar, and cayenne pepper. When have you used that in baking? I have not ever. And I had everything I needed for a lovely ginger cookie base. Grapeseed oil, molasses, aquafaba, and even more sugar. Chickpeas, for some reason. Uh, we'll see. Baking soda, gluten-free baking flour, ground ginger, clove, and cinnamon. I think my cheesecake had like five, six things. Seven tops. With Daniel's recipe, I have simpler ingredients. Stuff you're likely to find in your local grocery store or in your pantry. Cream cheese, graham crackers, vanilla, butter, eggs, sour cream, sugar, and last but not least, canned cherry topping. These ingredients might be simple, but I think I can use my chef skills to make them even better. If I had to guess, I would say these ingredients probably cost about $22. $17? That's great, I love that. I was not super far off, but I wasn't super close either. I'm gonna guess maybe 80 bucks. Wow, 97, a $97 cake. Just think about that for a second. You better love your guests. As per usual, I don't get anything. I don't know, cheesecake is sort of like an easy kind of dessert. And this looks like it's gonna shatter my thoughts on that. You have to understand that cheesecakes they're sort of like the diva of cakes. If you want to avoid cracks, you gotta give her time. There's a, a marmalade swirl. <laughs> I'm thinking marmalade's like a jelly, right? Like a jelly kind of, whatever this. Marmalade is delicious, it's rewarding. You can make big batches and keep them in your fridge and use them for all different kinds of things, but use caution, pay attention, and just be really careful. Uh, I think it's time to call Rose. Rose! Hey, Daniel, how are you? I'm doing well, how are you doing? It's been, it's been a long time, too long. What are you making today? Spiced orange ricotta cheesecake with a ginger mm -hmm. cookie crust. Oh, that sounds wonderful. I think what I'm most uh, sort of unsure of is this ricotta. I haven't tasted it yet um, because I don't know how to get it open and there's stuff oh, inside. <laughs> You're gonna have this really fresh, creamy taste. So I think it's perfect for a cheesecake. If you have a standing mixer, use the paddle attachment, not the whisk. So when you add too much air, when you put it in the oven, the air expands, it rises, and then once it comes out, it cools, it collapses, and that's how you get cracks. Less air is better. For whatever reason, cayenne pepper is in this, and, and it looks like it's included in a like a marmalade swirl of oranges, some lemon. Is marmalade got like jam, right? It's like jelly. I'm not crazy. It's it is and it isn't. 
Marmalade has the rind and it has a lot of pectin in it and that's where the thickening is gonna come in. Definitely err on the side of undercooked than overcooked with your sugar. You're making a sugar syrup, not a candy. Start with that first. It's gonna take the longest time, but this is a really nice recipe and you're a really good chef, so you're gonna have a really nice cheesecake at the end of this. I can't wait to see it. Thank you so much. I'm super excited and I will send you photos when everything's all hopefully done correctly. Here I feel I have like a little bit more of a direction in where this has to go. Fingers crossed I can I can bring it all together. So Rose said I should start with the marmalade. I'm just gonna get the, the zest and the juice of the lemon first and then I'm gonna slice down the oranges nice and thin. It smells really good. I can see why so many like cleaning products are lemon scented. Now I'm gonna get the juice of the lemon in the other little bowl. Ooh, you know what? I should have strained the seeds out. That's what the second half's for. So I'm gonna use a mandolin to thinly slice these oranges. I don't use mandolins that often. I haven't bought one for my, my home. Um, so this is really nice to actually have access to one. So these are super, super thinly sliced and they're like entirely circular. Uh, I'm just gonna quarter them and then throw the oranges, the lemon juice, the lemon zest into the pot, add some water, get this to a boil and just sort of let it cook down. I'm already nervous. <laughs> Making the marmalade is basically like making candy. It's going to be simmering. It's going to be bubbling. In the professional kitchen, we call it kitchen napalm. Kitchen napalm? Uh, so now I'm horrified. <laughs> they look soft, they feel soft. So I'm gonna add my sugar and cayenne to this. See, this is, this is bubbly. This is very bubbly. It's looking really brown. 22 is okay, I'm gonna, 223, okay, good, 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 it's up, okay. My kitchen napalm is up to temperature, so now I'm just gonna fill jars with it. Can you tell that I'm, I'm horrified of getting this on myself? <laughs> Daniel has sent me these lovely and delicious Nabisco grams, grade school favorites, but I've been gluten-free for about 20 years, so for my cheesecake, I'm gonna make my own graham cracker at the base of it all all-purpose gluten-free flour blend. Straight one-to-one -one substitution for any recipe where you've got all-purpose flour listed. Sugar, baking powder, and baking soda for leavening, kosher salt, and cinnamon. The cinnamon gives the graham crackers its classic graham cracker flavor. I'm gonna add my egg. I always break eggs into a separate vessel just in case that egg is bad. This is room temperature butter. Molasses gives a really lovely, deep flavor. Honey, vanilla, and last but not least, milk. I guess I'm now I'm gonna work on the ginger cookie crust and the, what's gonna be the aquafaba. This is the, the chickpea liquid. So I guess it kind of replaces egg in some instances. Flour first. I'm gonna do the same with my cinnamon, the cloves, uh, and then the ginger, and then baking powder. Soda, baking soda. Sprinkle in the salt. Now for the other portion. So throw the sugar in there. I'm gonna start off nice and slow. Now I've got the paddle attachment on because that is what I was recommended to use. I'm gonna throw in my molasses, a aquafaba. I'm gonna slowly start adding in my dry ingredients. And it smells like gingerbread. Oh, that's so cool. It didn't really smell like gingerbread until the molasses was in there. So the final mix is a little bit shaggy. It's quite sticky and nice and even. The next thing we're gonna do is roll this graham cracker dough out and get it in the oven to bake off. Use your rolling pin to roll it out. I want it about a quarter of an inch thick. This is a very satisfying process. Prick the surface of this cookie dough all over with a fork. Get this into the oven in about 15 minutes. Put a little bit of flour down just in case. Better to to not need it and have it than have it and not or not not have it and need it. That's that's the way the phrase goes. Bam! And this is gonna go into the oven. Take these lovely graham crackers, break them all up in the food processor. I want to eat these. Perfect. It's a nice fine crumb in here. I'm gonna add my sugar, pop it back on the processor, and then I'm gonna stream in my butter so that all that fat gets nicely, evenly distributed. We're good to go. 
This looks perfect. That looks pretty good. It came out, came out great. When I use my like graham cracker crust, typically they're pretty dry. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna process it up and then cook it again just so it gets like, even drier. There we go, okay. Unks, this I think honestly I'm just gonna save um, and eat later in the dark. <laughs> I'm gonna spread this out, rebake this so it gets like nice and dry. Percussion. Nice and dry, super crumbly. And to this, I'm literally just gonna add butter and sugar. It's kind of funny, I like dried it out just immediately to re-wet it with butter. <laughs> so this is the ginger cookie crust, uh, ready to go into the pan and be the base of my cheesecake. My crumbs are all ready. This spring porn pan is a wonderful tool in the kitchen for cakes that are too delicate to turn out when they're finished baking. You just get to unlock that thing and it comes right off. It's like magic. I'm just gonna take some of these crumbs and press it into the bottom of this pan. Just get in there with your hands. Start by pressing it from the center to move all those sandy bits out to the edges. I'm gonna take some butter, kinda just give this a whole thing a wipe down just so there's no sticking. I, I don't wanna be the first one to cry in, in uh, pro versus novice. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna give this a good wipe down. I actually like using a measuring cup. I've used this kind of like just spread it around. There's no weird spaces. Some of these crumbs are coming up the sides of my spring form pan. So what I'm gonna do is take my small offset spatula, hit the tip of my knife in, and go all the way around the edge to get a nice even layer. It's nice and flat. It's good to go. I'm literally just gonna toss this back into the oven for like the third time. It's ready to go into the oven, which has been preheating at 325 for about 10 minutes. Now it's time to get stuck into our cheesecake base. The first thing I'm gonna do is crack these eggs. Cracking the egg on the flat surface of my worktop is gonna help keep me from getting shells into this bowl of eggs. Break them up so they're nice and even. That way I have less mixing to do in this delicate cheesecake base. At the ricotta, which is pleasant. I've also got the marmalade. I mean, it smells so good. Yes, that came out lovely. Oh, and there's a little kick to it. I get it, I understand the cayenne now. Okay, look at us, we're learning. Get my room temperature cream cheese into this bowl and get it nice and smooth. You can see I still have some shaggy, stiff peaks here. I really want that cream cheese to get nice and smooth so that I avoid the dreaded cheesecake lumps. There is literally no one on planet Earth who likes lumpy cheesecake. Don't at me, there's no one, not a person. For starters, I got my cream cheese and my ricotta cheese. Both I'm gonna put into the mixer. I'm gonna let that do its thing. And while that's going, I'm gonna crack some eggs in there. This already looks way creamier than it did when we started. The ricotta and the eggs are really just giving like this creamy. No shells, not today. Not today. Vanilla extract, lemon juice. I'm gonna add my butter. If it wasn't creamy then, it's definitely creamy now. I'm gonna add a little bit of my cornstarch and then sugar. Can you ever have too much sugar baking? No. I think the answer is no. This part really does take time. Like, truly. It's not even high maintenance. It's like, it's a diva. I told you. It just needs its time. I'm just gonna add my sugar, followed by my eggs. You wanna add those eggs little by little so that you're not overwhelming what's in the bowl. All of the vanilla extract, and I've chosen to add about a teaspoon of kosher salt to Daniel's recipe just to give it that little extra oomph. Finish it by adding the sour cream in last by hand. The sour cream is the more delicate of the two types of dairy. This looks dreamy. It's nice and mixed. There aren't any lumps. This looks really beautiful. It's glossy, it's smooth, and it actually smells heavenly. That, oof, look at that. It's way thicker than any uh, batter I've made. Um, and the only thing left is the sour cream, which I'm going to fold in. It's supposed to be like a very delicate process. Oh, look at the folds. Batter looks good, it's all mixed. I'm literally just gonna pour this into the spring form pan on top of the cookie crust. I've been really trying to work on my presentation. I get so close to making it look nice and then I just, 
At the end, it always falls apart. So I've been trying to be mindful of how I present things. The flat top of my spatula here, scrape the top flat edge of my spatula across the top of my bowl to release all of that batter nice and evenly so it doesn't come pouring out is a top-down approach. I'm gonna give it a little wiggle so that it levels. And then I'm gonna actually take my small offset spatula and just run the blade of it through this cheesecake. I'm not scraping the base because I wanna release any air bubbles that are inside of that cheesecake base. So this is basically almost ready to go. The only thing missing is the, the fruit topping. My thought is if I were to break this into quadrants, I would probably do like one little spoonful for each thing and then kind of cutting it, little cuts. I think it looks pretty good to me. <laughs> this cheesecake is ready to go into the oven. I'm gonna be baking it in a bain-marie, which is a water bath designed to cook things gently at a nice, even heat. I'm gonna wrap this pan in this tin foil so that it's nice and secure. Now it's protected from alien radio waves and frequencies and stuff. The tin foil touches the surface of my cheesecake mixture. It can just mar my final result and it won't look as pretty. And I really, really want to see this diva in her final iteration. The wrapped cheesecake is gonna go right into this pan. I'm gonna fill it with warm water, move the oven 325 for about 60 to 65 minutes. You'll know it's finished when you give it a slight tap and the outer inch is set and the inside ring is slightly jiggly. I'm terrified of dropping this. Okay, Rose said to bake this at like 325. Nice and slow and low in the water bath, so that is exactly what I'm gonna do. Okay, fingers crossed. We can do this. We can do this, it's okay. It's all right, buddy, it's okay. Cheesecake is fully cooked. It's been cooling in the oven for about an extra hour. I really want everything to settle. I don't want any cracks. Daniel sent me this. It is canned cherry topping. Delicious on cheesecake, actually one of my favorites. I'm gonna stick with this cherry vibe, but I've got a professional substitution. I'm gonna do a two-part cherry topping. One part's gonna be a cherry gel, and the other part is gonna be candied cherries. I'm gonna use thawed frozen cherries, some gelatin here, a little sugar, and some lemon juice. Those things I can find easy in the freezer and in the pantry, and I just elevate this cheesecake just that little bit. So the very first thing I wanna do is bloom my gelatin, giving the gelatin a chance to hydrate in a liquid. Yeah, this actually looks Perfect, sometimes I rush. I'm just gonna let this gelatin do its thing. Next thing I'm gonna do is get these cherries and this lemon juice into the Vitamix. There's gonna be a little bit of texture to it, which is what I want. Cherry puree, medium heat. We're gonna add our sugar and our gelatin to this cherry puree. And we really don't wanna overheat the gelatin. Overheating the gelatin breaks down what it is actually intended to do, which is really set your puree. Yeah, we're at 126, it's great. So I'll take this off the heat, pour this cherry puree over the top of our cheesecake. This looks perfect. I'm going to pop it into the fridge for five or six hours and work on part two. Okay, so check it out, check it out. Look how cool that is. I like the swirls and stuff. It's baked in the oven for like an hour and then I let it cool down. It had the nice firm outside, little jiggly on the inside. And now the only thing that is left is to put it into the fridge to cool completely and then plate it. We're going to go right into the second part of my cherry topping, which is to make some candied cherries. I'm gonna take these maraschino cherries and I'm gonna drain them off. I love maraschino cherries. They're actually one of my <laughs> favorite stuff snack and I'm gonna reserve about a quarter cup of this juice. Sugar, medium heat, and heat it until this sugar starts to dissolve. They're looking nice and melty all together. Now's the point at which I'm gonna add my maraschinos. It's gonna go for about 45 minutes while the candying process takes place. When we're talking about temperature in candying things, 
The easiest way to look at it is the hotter your candy gets, the harder your candy gets. You want these cherries to be nice and soft, so 235, the softball stage, is the perfect temperature to take them to. You should be able to see through the bodies, almost, of the cherries themselves. They've hit 235, they look glassy and icy. I'm just gonna pull these cherries out to this parchment lined sheet tray to cool. These are gonna be so pretty. My cherries look perfect. They are absolutely volcanically hot, so I'm going to let them cool, and then I can arrange them on the top of my cheesecake. Ho, 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 ho. It's time to plate this. I am gonna eat this delicious cheesecake. First, I gotta get it ready. I've got this metal container here filled with hot tap water. I'm actually just gonna pop my offset spatula inside of this run my offset all around the edge of the spring form, and the heat of that is just gonna make it one nice clean motion. So I'm basically just gonna take my offset spatula, and run it around, and I'm hoping nothing like, like flops out. I wanna try it, but I shouldn't yet. Unbuckling. Oh. Oh, beautiful. Oh! She's gorgeous and I'm just gonna bejewel the top of this cheesecake with these lovely little gems. I mean, it's together. That's, that's a huge win in my book. I'm just trying to not grab these cherries. There we go. Okay. A couple on the side. Make the plate look cute. This is my take on Daniel's cherry cheesecake. Wow, that was a horrible plating job too. I'm gonna do a little reconstructive surgery on it just to make it look a little a little prettier. Hey, no one's gonna know this. This never happened. What are you talking about? I don't know what you're talking about. This is my take at Chef Lonnie's Cheesecake. And I am hoping that she thinks I did a good job. It looks ready to be eaten. It looks ready to be eaten. Mmm, I love cheesecake. I love cheesecake so much. The al dente bite of this beautiful candied cherry combined with that cherry gel. It's lovely and bright, nice and sweet, but not overpowering. Oh my God, this is like ice cream almost. It's so delicious. Mmm, mmm. This looks really good. It smells good. Wow. Wow, it's just incredible. You, you, it's really not, it doesn't taste like cheese. There's, you can't taste the cream cheese in this. I get so much more orange and like a citrusy zest than I do like cheese and, and the marmalade's got like a little bit of a kick to it too, but it's not overpowering because of the fat in the cheesecake. This is, wow. I'm like on a journey right now. I'm on a flavor journey and I never want to stop. There's like, my cheesecake is like down here and then there's like regular cheesecake you buy at a store, and then if you add homemade marmalade, it's like insane. This is so good. I, I can't wait to see what Chef Lonnie thinks about this. This is incredible. I can't wait to see what you made. Daniel! You're so cool. Like it's, it's like a, it's an honor to actually meet you virtually. Like you're the coolest person ever, I think. My mom tells me that, and, and I take that. <laughs> Cheesecake's not my first choice typically for desserts. And this is absolutely just mind blowing. It's so good. So oh. good. Oh, I'm so glad you like it. Let me see, let me see, let me see. Let me yeah. So it's right here. Ooh, it looks so pretty. You, you did great with the swirling. I love that. That looks like, it looks like an old book. I heard you called it kitchen napalm. And I sort of got an idea as to why I started bubbling like crazy. So I was like, I was a little scared at that point. It looks really beautiful. Do you want to see what I did Thank with you. yours? I was just saying, I want to see, yeah. I, was, I gave you a very bare bones, easy peasy kind of thing. So check it out. I did a little, okay. Here's like a, oh my goodness. Can oh you see? man. I did like a cherry gel and candied cherries. Kind of did like your cherry vibe a couple different ways. Hey, I welcome it. Thank you so much for everything. And like I said, this has been so much fun. <laughs> See ya.